from the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel. With the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents The Daily TV Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, the friendship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Welcome to the celebration of the daily televised Mass. My name is Father Michael Coots. The televising of this Mass is made possible by a contribution from three donors. The first is Catherine Benincasa from Edmonton, Alberta, for the repose of the souls of her mother, Maria Grazia Benincasa, who passed away on the 6th of April, 2018, her father, Tommaso Benincasa, and the deceased members of their family for their children and grandchildren, healing of their minds and bodies, good health, and return to the Catholic faith and peace among them. The second is Diane from Espanola, Ontario, for, the pati for patients in our daily life and for those who are suffering, especially Bob, Annette, and their family. Strengthen us by your power, Father, and restore our health so that we may continue doing your work, and we thank you for blessings received. The third is Michael Clancy, a, par a parishioner of St. Mary's and St. Cecilia Parish in Simcoe, Ontario, in memory of his wife, Winnie, who died in April 2015, and Frank Cahill, and for the living and deceased members of the Clancy, Reagan, and Cahill families, and McNally families. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. We would also like to remind you that during this Holy Week, our broadcast partners in Canada will air two-part National Catholic Mission in prime time. The mission is also available on the daily televised Mass website and YouTube channel as of today. The mission will be rebroadcast on in place of the daily televised mass, part one airing on Good Friday and part two on Holy Saturday. The theme of this year's mission is touching God's compassion. And our mission leader is the most Reverend Gerard Bergey, Bishop of St. Catharines. And so now as we prepare to celebrate our Eucharist, let us call to mind that we are so close to Easter. We are so close to the passion, suffering and death of our Lord. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that through our weakness, that though in our weakness we fail, we may be revived through the passion of your only begotten Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him, he will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice in the earth and the coastlands wait for his teaching. Thus says God the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord, I have called you in righteousness, I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, 
to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison, those who sit in darkness. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave, him, they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume and ma made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of the disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, Why was not this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and he kept the common purse and used to steal what was put in it. Jesus said, leave her alone. She, brought, she bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. When the great crowd of Jews learned that he was there, they came not only because of Jesus, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priest planned to put Lazarus to death as well, since it was on account of him that many of the Jews were deserting and believing in Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany. 
Bethany and Beth Fajay are two villages on the top of the hill looking down from the east at Jerusalem. Bethany is, was a place where the Essenes lived. They were not kosher Jews. They were the, also the people who were considered to be the outcasts in society. Last year when I was in Jerusalem, Sister Ivan Hunter gave me a book by Bargil Pixner, who is a scripture scholar, and he put this whole picture of Bethphage and Bethany into perspective. Bethany was a place where the lame, the blind, the lepers would stay. They were the ones who had a blemish, and therefore they were not allowed to come into the temple. Their only consolation was from a distance, and all of us can relate to that in this coronavirus uh, atmosphere. From a distance, they would be able to look at the sacrifices, the smoke rising from the sacrifices, and join in the prayers that came cascading up to the top of the mountain. Six days before the Passover, if that was the case, then Jesus must have come to the house of Lazarus, Martha, and Mary on the night of Palm Sunday. Jesus had gone down, and he must have come up on foot. He went down on a donkey, came up by foot. His legs must have been sore. I did that trip pretty often, and believe me, I would have loved to have a place, person like Mary massage my feet after they were so sore. But of course, they would scold Mary because why would she use such a lot of money on this ointment? So let us stay with Jesus and with Lazarus. We can go to Jesus and say, what was going on in your mind? You defended this woman and said, she is preparing my body for the burial. Did you have a premonition that you were going to die? Jesus was a prophet, not one who could look into the future, but one who could read the signs of the time. He saw the disturbance going on between the Sadducees and scribes and Pharisees, and he knew that this was a dangerous time. And so he would say, how oh, I have longed to eat this Passover with you at the last Passover. He had eaten many Passovers with the apostles, but this one he knew would be his last. And so he was grateful to Mary. As we are in this coronavirus atmosphere, we're so scared and we're so fearful. And when I look at the countries like Italy and Spain and Iran, where so many are dying, almost six, 700 a day, they must ask Jesus, what did you feel like when you knew that you were going to die? What were the thoughts going on in your mind? Did you cry out to your father, let this chalice pass me by even then? Stay with Jesus for some time. And then move over to Lazarus. Lazarus was one of the three people that Jesus brought back to life. The other was the daughter of Jairus and the only son of the widow of nine. But Lazarus was a little different. He had been in the tomb for three days. He was already beginning to smell. And yet, out of that darkness, light came and life came. And we, remember, and we remember our first reading today, it is one of the suffering servants, suffering servants who brought light into darkness, who set prisoners free. Lazarus was one of the prisoners wrapped up in, in, in cloths, and Jesus would say, set him free. That's what we are called to do. And so we can ask Lazarus, what was it on the other side? Whom did you meet? Did you meet your parents? Did you meet your friends? What was it like? We all want to know, but there's nobody who's come from the other side to our present place and has told us what has been taking place over there. Spend some time with Lazarus. He is the suffering servant in a way who will bring light into our darkness who will help us to see better, and who will set us from the prison of our fears, of fears not only of the coronavirus, but all the other fears that encompass us. 
But once we have finished with Lazarus, we move over to Mary. There are so many Marys in the gospel today. Mary, the one who was at Bethphage, the sinner. No, she wasn't that Mary. It was simply known as the sinner who came to the house of Simon the leper. He was not allowed to go into Jerusalem because he had a blemish. And so he put a dinner for Jesus. And at that dinner, this woman came and anointed his feet. This is not the Mary that we have, the sister of Lazarus, the sister of Martha. She was quite different. She was the one who had spent time with Jesus, sat at the feet of Jesus while Martha was suffering and really ticked off her sister Martha. But she had chosen the better part, and now she has chosen the better part of anointing the feet of Jesus. Ask her, what does it feel like? Did you, we could say, Mary, did you know? Did you know that Jesus was going to die? Were you ready to embalm his body even before he had died? And so during this day, as we get into the Holy Week, let us stay with Jesus, stay with Lazarus, stay with Mary, and perhaps even stay with Judas. Each one of them has got a lesson for us. And then on Easter Sunday, we will be able to say, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Would you join me now as we pray together? Let us pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and for all those who minister to our faith community, especially our priests who have to celebrate Mass and just stream the Mass to our faith community via media. For them, we pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for our faithful televised community who watch us and pray for us, who support us with their finances, who constantly support us with their letters and their emails. For them, we pray to the Lord. For all those who have died and for those who mourn their passing during this time, we pray to the Lord. Loving and gracious God, listen to the prayers that we make at this momentous time in our history. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed God. Through the mystery of this wine and water, may we share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed Blessed God. God. Lord God, be pleased to accept these gifts that we offer to you with humble and with contrite hearts. Pray, my sisters, my brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look graciously, O Lord, upon the sacred mysteries we celebrate here, and may what you have mercifully provided to cancel the judgment we incurred, bear, us, bear for us the fruit of eternal life. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world 
as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we sing. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Thomas our Bishop, and this entire people of God. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant a peace and unity in accordance with your will 
who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us share with one another a sign of this peace and friendship. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us and all our dear ones unto life everlasting. For those of you at home, join with me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you were already there, I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you. Permit not that I should ever be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May your protection, O Lord, defend the humble and keep safe those who trust in your mercy, that they may celebrate the Paschal festivities not only with bodily observance, but also with purity of mind. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass has been celebrated. Go now in the peace of Christ. Amen. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. like to sponsor a Mass or share in sponsoring a Mass, please call our office at 1-888-383-6277 for details. <laughs> <laughs>